Hello, and welcome back to the Ask the Color Expert podcast. Today's special guest is Stacy Jaradovac. I probably slaughtered. Did I do good? Jaradovac. I've, I've known Stacy for two years, and I've called her Stacy J for that reason. I didn't want to slaughter her last name. So Stacy is what you call a girl Friday. She is um, does a little bit of everything. She's jack of all trades. She is a massage therapist, a hairstylist, and a nail artist. So she does all things in her business called Blossom. And she is here today as my special guest. She's a, a member of my hair color community, the Hair Color Secrets Insiders. And I have been blessed to know her and meet her in person. So I'm excited to have you joining me today, Stacy, so we can chat about all things color. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm excited too. So, you know, being an educator and sharing all things hair color and having the gift of, of being in the company of many, many hairstylists that are looking to up-level their color, you have stood out from the very beginning. And I'm not just saying that to you because you're my guest today, but your passion for education is unmatched. You know, anything that I host it within my own education, you not only said you were going to show up, you showed up, you participated fully. Um, even when it wasn't hair color related, you showed up, participated fully. And if only everyone could be so passionate about education, I think that they would see the value in their success, in their journey, that education is is such a valuable thing. So, so where do you think that comes from for you, all that passion for education? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, I, I have always been excited about learning. I mean, it, you continually learn, it never ends. My problem is I, um, I don't know when I, and it's probably not a problem. I would say, I don't know when to stop. It's just like, I just, uh, embrace it and doesn't matter where I am. I've been sitting on a lounge chair in Puerto Rico <laughs> on education chats. And it's just something that I, I, I'm not a reader, but I'm more of a visual person. So I crave learning. I love that. And I love that you said, you know, you don't know when to stop because I'm the same way. And when I look back over my 35 year career, the absolute hands down ticket to every success I've ever had was attending something that seemed like it could be a waste of time and getting one small thing out of the event. My kids make fun of me because when we're watching a movie, I just did it last night. I'm watching this movie. It was on Hulu. I was just like, scroll, scroll, scroll. Couldn't find anything interesting. Wasn't ready for the whole Christmas movie thing and started watching it and knew how bad it was going to be from the very beginning. And I have to see it through. And I just recently did a human design reading for myself. Like I, I went to someone that does human design uh -huh. and it turns out that that's just the way that I'm built. I'd be curious to hear your human design numbers because according to my chart in human design, that is a character trait of mine that I don't bail on things. I have to see them through. Um, and she actually recommended when I get a book, because I have like four unfinished books at all times because they're so bad that I can't push through and finish, but I don't want to bail. So I keep them around and try to like do a couple of chapters at a time. And she knew that about me without knowing me. I said, um, I forgot wow. my number. I think it's like one, three or something. She goes, oh, you're a one, three. Do you have like four books around that you're half done? I'm like, yes. And she's like, that is part of your makeup. Like that's how you were made. And she said, from now on, open the jacket of the book and look at the table of contents. If there's chapter contents and just look at the title of the chapter. And if the chapter interests you, go right to that chapter. And I thought that was interesting because to your point, you never know what you're missing if you don't finish. Right. And, you know, in person classes, I'd be sitting there like, oh, I know all this stuff. And then I would stay another 10 minutes. And at the very end, they would share a new product that I didn't know about or a book that I never heard of. There was always a nugget at the end. And that's what makes me keep going and keep finishing because I don't want to miss, I don't want to have FOMO and be stuck in the what, hap what happened after I left kind of thing. Right. You know? Right. 
Right. So keep that's, going, that's keep going and keep learning. Yeah, it's it's always, I, um, I'm kind of that way where I'm scatterbrain have a lot going on. And when I say I'm going to do something, I stick to it as much as it pains me. It's like, I committed, I'm going to finish this. I totally get it. And I'm the same way, except for exercise. Oh, yeah. I just don't get why I can't follow through on that. Like I start off so strong with such great intentions and I start doing it. And the first time, like hair color and hair is always going to be my, my number one thing. So anytime something comes up, like if you reached out and said, Hey, I have this client, I need help. I'd be like, all right, I'm not going to that class. I'm going to help Stacy. Like I would much prefer to do what we're doing right now than to be on a spin bike or on a treadmill or on, you know, um, an elliptical. And I hate that I don't love it. So I've decided that instead of keeping on forcing myself to do things I hate, I'm going to accidentally get exercise. I signed up for tap class and pickleball. So I'm moving my body and I'm getting out of the house and meeting people, but it's not that monotonous, boring on a machine, just staring at the same spot on the wall type of thing. Um, and I think that the, the virtual education world has been so amazing that we can provide these events that we do that with you and other people supporting us and, and showing what a value it is that we can get the full value just as much virtually as we do in person has been incredible. And thank God for it during COVID because I would have been going absolutely insane. I love the virtual world. It's, it's not like you're at a hair show where you have all these different people you want to see. It's you can pick the time. It's being shown at your, you know, in front of you at home. And you can set aside that time to sit and listen. And, and as much as people think I'm, you know, outgoing, I'm very much an introvert and kind of just, I'm a listener before I'm a speaker. And so I love this virtual world. If I want to be seen, I can turn the camera on it. If I don't, I can turn it off. But also, I don't have the distraction of other people and things going on and me looking to, or, you know, trying to listen and have somebody next to you, a group talking where you can't hear. And so this, I can shut myself in, put my ear pods in and just be present. I love it. That's awesome. I've, I've gotten messages from people early in the morning and they're in other countries and they'll say, I didn't sleep last night. I found you on YouTube and I couldn't stop watching your videos and I couldn't sleep. And that to me is like the ultimate compliment that because I know myself, I'm trying to learn this whole new world of NFTs. I don't know if you've even heard of it. Um, it's a whole new type of currency that's coming out. It's, it's beyond cryptocurrency and all of that. And it's the future of virtual education is going to be tied to these NFTs. So I don't want to be a lagger and a, a dinosaur and not be hip and cool, but it is so uninteresting to me and I just can't wrap myself around it. So I'm trying to watch these videos and, with the, and, and within the first three minutes, I'm just like trying so hard to stay focused and stay there. So if I'm keeping somebody up at night and they can't stop watching, that's good because that means they're yeah. getting exactly what they need. And it's, not a lot of fluff and a lot of chatting about other things. It's funny because I, I repurpose my coffee chats as my YouTube videos. So the traditional YouTube person that watches um, things on YouTube, they want like, get to the point lady, get to the point. And I've had people comment, they're like, okay, enough, enough talk, get to the hair color stuff. And I'm like, they don't realize it's a coffee chat that it's supposed to be more chatty. So I was like, oh, right. lesson learned you know, listen to your audience, take the feedback, don't get offended, take that feedback. And I'm like, oh, I need to do dedicated YouTube videos where I'm like, hey guys, glazing, let's talk about glazing. It gets too muddy because like get right to the point because you lose them. If you don't yeah. get to the point in a minute, they're off to another video. Yeah. 
I found you, I think, through one of your coffee chats, just stumbled across it on Facebook. And like you said, two years ago, I was getting ready for hip replacement surgery. Mm. And so I had all the time in the world to just sit around because I was going to be laid up for at least a week. And I know when I signed up for your membership, it was like, you know, sometimes you sign up for these things and it's just not what you think it is. And I just thought, I'll take a chance. I'll sign up because I wasn't working. COVID had just hit. And so, you know, we were kind of, you know, people a little afraid, but um, it's been amazing. I was like, just, you know, got into the membership and just started, you know, going through the segments and I've stayed ever since. And I feel like we've become good friends. I, I'm, we're a lot alike too, because we're both Taurus. <laughs> when I, I hear you on your chats or when you're doing your membership things and just the things that come out I laugh because that's the real me but if I were in a group of people I'd sit and I'd be quiet and but it's I love it's that like, and I absolutely love that we have become friends through this that's that's my favorite part is knowing you know, of course I want to make a living and I want to have a lot of members because I have bills to pay. But I think when you surpass a certain level, when you get into having thousands of people on your membership, it's no longer personal. I know when you have something going on in your salon and I'm rooting for you and I'm checking in with you saying, how did that go? And you send me the after photo and I want to see that I've actually made a difference in your life as a colorist that you're understanding and you're progressing. So the fact that you not only signed up, you showed up is the biggest thing because I think some people think that throwing up their credit card and signing up for something is magically going to make them a better hairdresser. And if you don't take the information and implement it and try it, like you have, have trusted the process and trusted me from the beginning. When I said, you know, do X, Y, Z, you may have looked at it and said, holy crap, I would never have thought to use orange for that. For instance, like the nine AA conversation, it's like, oh, I would never do that, but I'm going to trust that she's saying this for a reason. And then you do it once and you're like, oh my gosh, this really works. And then you're armed for the next situation. Um, so I think that COVID has been shitty in so many ways, but has been a gift in so many ways, because I've, I feel more in touch with and more friendly with you and members of the insiders than the people I grew up with my entire life. I live in a totally different state. So mm -hmm. for me, having this community around me and having that support meant the world to me. I would have been, I would have not been surviving COVID very well if I didn't have it. So it's yeah. just, just as a, a positive experience for me to have people growing and changing and seeing results. And it's funny because you said, you know, oh, I signed up for this thing and I was just hoping that it was what it said it was going to be. But I think you'll agree that you came in looking for hair color, but you're coming out the other side going, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is amazing. It's funny because um, when we talk about me and loving education, I've been a massage therapist for 20 plus years, but I still kept my license. I'd see, you know, a few friends would ask to get their hair done. I'd be the kitchen beautician, you know, but I ended up um, filling in for a stylist in a salon doing her waxing clients. And the owner asked me to stay. There wasn't room for a chair for me to do hair, but I could do my facials and my nails, and I used to, when I didn't have people, I would sit in the back room and I'd, I'd just YouTube videos, Sam Via or, you know, Philip Wilson, different people. And one of the girls came back and she goes, why do you watch those videos? And I'm like, because it's education I'm learning. Well, you don't do hair. Well, I do do hair. And there's not a chair for me at the moment, but it doesn't mean that I will never go back to being behind the chair. And 
massage takes its toll on the body. Mm. I've, I've been doing this a long time and my fingers are starting to hurt, you know, when, and when I'm with patients, it's back to back to back. When I'm doing hair while they're processing, I don't double book. I'm, my attention is on that person. I don't like to be like, okay, go sit in the chair. Well, you know, you never know something. Oh, that's processing quicker. She's got warm body temperature. I don't want to be in that situation where I have to either cut my haircut short or whatever I'm doing in between. I want to be present, but that's how I want to be treated. So I, I was just like, because we can always learn. And she was the frazzled stylist that was always coming in. What do I do? What do I do? And I never wanted to be that person. Now, granted, if I had downtime, I'd go over to another stylist and say, do you mind if I watch? You know, it, it, it's just like, why, why are you picking that color? Why are you? And really a lot of it was a guessing game. And I've been in the business since night. I went to school in 1984, moved to Europe for three and a half years, and then came back in 1988 and just had to finish a few extra hours to get my license. And so even when I lived in Europe, the family that lived below us, the son was a hairstylist. The daughter was a waxing manicurist. I went to work with them. I would just like want to be there and see what was going on and how things were different. It just, it's just part of me. I've always liked making people feel good. So that's awesome. Where did you live? Naples, Italy. Oh my gosh. I'm so jealous. Yeah. It was amazing. Everybody'd be like, come home, come home. Or like, no, you come visit us. You got a place to stay. But we traveled everywhere over there. So it was, it was amazing, an amazing experience. That's awesome. But you didn't stop learning because you were in another country. And now you're talking, you know, a little bit of a language barrier and different things culturally, but to be able to pick up things and then maybe bring something back to the States that you learn from them that we don't do here and vice versa, you know, share with them something that we may do differently. Um, and that's the other thing that I love about virtual education. We now have members in our group from Australia, from New Zealand, from Scotland, from Ireland. Like I never even thought that that could be a thing. I, I feel bad because the live calls, it's like, you know, in the middle time of the change. <laughs> um, but they don't seem to mind. They're, they're watching them on replay, but I just love that community. And I love being able to meet people from all, since I can't travel and my passion, my only, my biggest passion other than hair is travel. They're my two right. top things. Um, yeah. And since I can't, at least I can chat with these people from all over the world and get a little glimpse in to their world. And, you know, they, they cringe when we say bangs, they call it fringe because bang is something quite different over there. Um, so it's just really cool to have that kind of, um, virtual community for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. what do you see as your biggest hurdle coming out of COVID? Like, how do you feel like you're different going into 2022? Well, I mean, the biggest hurdle when I left a salon uh, at, that was, we were all booth renters and I went to an individual suite situation. And when COVID hit, there's 30 stylists in the building and majority of them wanted to keep the doors locked. My suite is right up front. So when people would walk in, I... I'd be there, you know, I'd hear them ring the bell, I'd go greet them. And so a lot of it was, well, I'm available. I'd always say, oh, I had a cancellation, perfect timing. You know, not like I'm waiting for people. Right. <laughs> so um, I'd say that's a big hurdle, but I really do have a core clientele that keeps me busy. Would I like a few new people? Yes, but I'm, I'm a thinker. I like to see, I like to think, don't throw something at me. And it's, it, then my brain starts going crazy. So it's hard to take a walk in or somebody calling, which also comes to the virtual consultation, you know, the whole COVID 
you know, getting on a FaceTime, talking to somebody, but um, I don't know. I just, I, it's, it's much quieter in our salon than it used to be. And do I like it? I don't know. I'm kind of on the edge. I like it busy, but I like it quiet sometimes. Yeah. Busy is good, but hectic is not, you know, so right. you can be busy without being hectic. I was just doing a class for um, our salon for Bryn has some new hires. And because she's not a hairdresser, she asked me if I would do some virtual color classes with her new colorist. I said, sure, I would love to. So we're doing the class and I'm looking behind her. I felt like I was in the salon. It was so cool. You know, I haven't been there and I'm looking around. I'm like, it's the week before Christmas. Why is that place not insane? And she said, mom, it's intentional. You know, we're not working like that anymore. And I was like, you know what? Good for you because my Christmases were ruined with mm -hmm. the way that I jam packed my book. I always felt so such empathy for the client who didn't schedule ahead, but shame on them for not scheduling. Like, it's not a shock that it's December 25th, you know? And I would, I would often say that to clients. I'd be like, did you just find out that Christmas is December 25th? Haha. <laughs> you know, I'd make a joke out of it, but really it was like, you're a pain in my ass for waiting and then making me feel bad that I, that I have to take time away from my family to get you in because you didn't plan according. But now that I have been coached by a life coach and now that I'm a life coach, I'm like, I created that mayhem. That was yeah. me. You know, yeah. that was me allowing, I could easily have said, no, I'm sorry. I'm fully committed. I'm going to mm -hmm. have to see you in the beginning of January. Yeah. So I have seen people saying that their salon is a lot quieter than prior Christmas or I should say holidays because not everybody celebrates Christmas, but that it's a lot quieter this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if people are still a little weird about the whole COVID thing because it seems to be kicking back up again, or if it's just they got so used to going so long between appointments that they're not on that same schedule that they used to be before that all went down. Yeah. Uh, well, and I'm really good about having people pre-book. So I know in advance, you know, and my vacation is planned in advance. So I know when I'm not going to be there. And um, it's funny because I had some people trying to book and for a while, it was no big deal. Oh, sure, I can get you in. And then they're like, we count out the weeks. And I'm like, oh, I'm already booked. But I have a set schedule, you know, time. And I don't want to be all over the board. I like to be structured. I want to know what's coming next. And so I don't veer too much out of that time that I've allotted to be at the salon. And I, I, I will say I have pretty much stuck to it. I see other stylists that are like listening to them. Oh, I can't get you in here. Well, wait, I can get you in early before I start or at the end of my day. And I, you know, when my kids were little, I did have the, I was fortunate that I could stay home, but I do feel bad for my salon mate who has littles and just seeing her work herself like crazy. And it's, it's like, wow, you know, but. Yeah, I think when you're in it, you're <laughs> so, it's like that, um, almost like how you hear people describe like a blind rage where they're like so angry, they don't even know what they did or how they drove home or whatever. I think you're just in this state of constant, where do I need to be? What time is it? What am I behind on? What, like when I look back at those years, I think, mm -hmm. how am I even speaking full sentences right now? Because I had so much going on, but again, it goes back to that was a choice that I made and I could make a totally different choice and have set hours, set times, set boundaries and, and make the same amount of money and have a much calmer life. Um, right. so I think that you, you and I being 80s hairdresser, we came from, you know, I was 85, you were 84. I think that the industry has changed so much, but the reason that you and I are still here is because we keep adapting and changing with it. We're not fighting the changes. You know, you mentioned virtual consultations. I just, right before you and I jumped on here, I was teaching a, a Zoom class and that was something that I was strongly suggesting. It was for a group of salon owners. And I said, we have to do things differently and we have to 
really be mindful of our income producing time. We can no longer give a free consultation in the salon when that's a slot that someone could be getting a single process retouch at, you know, 85 plus dollars. So um, using technology to our advantage and tightening things up and working smarter in the end makes everyone happier. Um, I think salon owners have had to be um, adaptable to more flexibility with scheduling and not being so hard lined and you have to work Saturdays and you have to work evenings and you have to work this many hours. I think the new generation of stylists, their, their boundaries are too good. They want to work like a day and a half. <laughs> you know, when I hear them talking, I do not work more than four hours. I only take four clients a day. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like it's, it's swung the other way yeah. where they're not even doing the thing to, to put in the time to then have the ability to be more flexible with their time. They want it right off the bat. So mm -hmm. again, it goes back to the, me struggling to learn NFTs and stay hip and modern. There's something to be said for new, better, different, and being open to the learning. You know, I can't tell you how many times it's especially with a newer member, you know, we, we opened the membership in May and November. So we just had new members in November and they seem to always come in asking the same questions and fighting the same concepts until they can't fight anymore. And they'll say, you know, I have this client and, da, 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 and I'll say step one, step two, step three, let me know how it goes. And then I check in, I say, Hey, Mary, how did that client go? And she'll be like, not good. And I'll be like, Oh my God. What did I? And I'll go back and I'll look to see, like, what did I say? Did I miss a step? Was I not clear? And I'll say, well, what happened when you did, you know, step two? And she'll say, well, I didn't do that. Oh. I'm like, well, why didn't you do it? Well, I just did what I always do because that seemed too too different. And I was like, well, you're here for a reason, you know. Obviously, what you've always done isn't working. So right. why go back to what you've always done? Take a risk, try something new. And and one of the the things that I think makes my education a little unique is I'll say, I don't expect you to trust me right away, but I expect you to try new things. So if you're really uncomfortable, try it on a mannequin first. If you're less uncomfortable, do it in the back of your client's hair, just at the bottom of the nape, just to see it on the head in real time. And then do what you normally would have done everywhere else, but have that one spot in the back where you try it the new way. And that has made people go, oh, wow, I actually saw that it worked and I'm not afraid anymore. And then they start to trust and start to do the thing. But that's that's the fun part to see people blossom into a little bit more of a risk taker and trying things, you know, maybe on like a hair swatch or a doll head versus yeah. on a paying client where it's really scary. I will say since joining the membership, I have had um, a customer say she noticed the change. Like when she came at me with, she wanted to kind of change her tone a bit. I was like, sure, not a problem. And it really wasn't a problem. It was like, okay, we'll just make this little shift. And, you know, the um, it, she just said, I just see the way you look at color so much differently than the first time she sat in my chair. And she was somebody that came to me, her sister-in-law, she moved three hours away from her sister-in-law, who was a hairdresser, sent her with her products when she moved down here to apply herself. And it was just a simple, single process, root retouch. And um, when she ran out, she came to the salon and trying to match what she had to what I was, you know, using myself, it didn't go so well. I applied color and I could see the oxidation. I'm like, this is not turning out right. And the panic in my, myself going and grabbing somebody else who was a colorist and having her come in just to give her opinion, it worked out great. But every time she would come in before I found you, I would panic. Is she going to change on me? I finally found what was working. Is she going to change? Please don't change. You know, please don't change. I got it yeah. right. Don't don't make any changes. Don't, don't change on me. But when it came time and I moved salon locations, I was pretty much on my own. And even though I, 
it's just like you want somebody else to throw something off. You're in the back. Now we don't have a back room. We're all open. So right. when I'm mixing, people are, you know, right behind me and there's, ch- if, if it's busy and my salon mate is in there, the chatter. So I have to just kind of zone in. I have a whiteboard. <laughs> I write measurements I on it. So if somebody says something and I'm like, squirrel, I'm like, wait, the, the scale turned off. What did I have in there? So I do that, but it, it is amazing. And I feel amazing having found you and what you have brought to my confidence that I can do this. I will say I still occasionally get in my head and try to make things complicated, but for the most part, it's like, take a step back, breathe, think, and it will it will be fine. And I don't panic anymore with hot roots. Shades EQ has become my friend. Yeah. I love Shades EQ. <laughs> and I started with Shades EQ. When you talk about starting with Shades EQ, I was in the same situation. What is this bozo orange stuff? <laughs> but, um, and you know, when I went back probably eight years ago, everything nobody in the salon it was 9v 9t 9p so maybe a little clear and that was what everybody used and, and i and knew, still do that's still all over knew. social and media i knew no it, that's only a level eight i need a level eight i can't put nine it's not going to do anything and so when i moved into my own space it was like if i'm going to commit to this I am going to have not every single color, but at least something in every single level. Now, eventually I did grow to having pretty much every single Shades EQ color. My space allows me to store it, but I'm just that type of person that I don't want to be thrown that loop. Like I need this and I don't have it, which did happen the other day. I needed a 7M. We only had 4N. So it was like, a smidge with lots of clear and it turned out beautiful she loved it I loved it but you know for the most part it's I'm gonna commit I'm having everything available that's awesome and I love that you um you know some people to your point about the back room at that other salon where she was like why are you watching those videos some people would make the leap into the solo suite and then make it their job the first week to find someone in another suite that understands color to still go and phone a friend, you know, mm-hmm. instead of digging in and learning and, and learning it, I'm sure, you know, in the beginning, when you first did the membership, it was very uncomfortable because you're relearning and unlearning so many things, but I'm so proud hearing you say that you knew when you didn't have the seven, you knew what to do and you didn't panic and the panic is usually the problem. 90% of corrective situations, you know, when, when someone writes me in an email and they're like, oh, wait, do you see what I did? And they'll say, I did this and it didn't look like it was turning out. So I hurried up and rinsed it. And then I did this. It's that panic that ensues that you start slapping on all these harsh things to try and quickly fix something that never needed fixing in the first place. Mm -hmm. And just understanding the fundamental basics and choosing the right shade from the beginning. And then you can walk away and know with full confidence that it's going to turn out the way that you wanted it to. So I'm very, very proud of how far you've come. I've, I've, it's been a gift for me to watch your confidence soar and to see you, you know, you being the education junkie that we both are (laughs) all through COVID every single time I jumped on a Redken class, I saw you in the attendee <laughs> list and we were chatting on a side chat together. So I'm yeah. the teacher and I'm still the student, you know, I'm still learning because Redken keeps adding all these different shades. They all have their own little quirky personalities. And there's always one little nugget that I get from those classes that I can mm-hmm. then pass on to everybody else in the group. So well, I'm so happy that, uh, that we've connected and we, and I totally agree with the Taurus thing. It's so funny. My, my two nieces are Tauruses and I pointed something out the other day to my husband. He's like, Oh my God, that is not a coincidence. Like that is so (laughs) true. Cause the two of them and my son and me, all four of us do the same kind of things that our other 
family member, you know, brothers and sisters and everything don't do. So it's not a how you grew up thing. It's definitely right. a horoscope in, in your makeup thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. hundred percent. Well, tell people how they can get in touch with you, Girl Friday, because you are a plethora of knowledge with both, you know, with massage and hair and nails. And if anybody wants to reach out and, and pick your brain or, or look at your social media, where can they find you? Um, so I have um, my Instagram handle is at body underscore N as in Nancy underscore mind. That was my, mas- and it still is my massage business name. And that's what I go by. Um, I did just make an Instagram at body underscore N as in Nancy underscore main, M-A-N-E for oh, hair. Oh, clever. I love yes. That. Yes. So kind of in the realm there, but I, that and when you talk about the currency thing, me trying to learn Instagram and posting, I'm just like, wh- where's my kids when I need them? <laughs> to I know. Just say, Can you post this picture for me? <laughs> but um, and I'm I'm in Oregon. I'm a West Coast girl, little town of Oregon City. If we all know our history, the end of the Oregon Trail. I just saw my son sent me um, an Instagram post that they're now adding flights from Tampa to Oregon. So I need to, I need to plan that trip and come see you and take some more. There you go. go. Yeah. I'm trying to plan the next trip, you know, when my husband's going to Florida to work, I'll take along and then I'll I'll call you do lunch again. I would love that. So thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for sharing your experience as an insider. I so appreciate that because some people listening may not even know what an insider is and um, having you and, and, and meeting you through this has been a true gift. I'm really happy that I got to know you and I'm happy that you were able to join the podcast. So thank you for being here. Thank you for asking me and thank you for all that you give. You're welcome. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you everybody for listening and we'll see you on the next one.